In this video, I talk about an important difference between event and multi-slide synchronized video. Uh, I've had to answer this question a number of times and I thought I'd create a specific video for it. Uh, and that way, of course, uh, I can just uh, make this video available to anyone who has the same question. But one of the issues that's come up on, on my YouTube channel a number of times is people try to make, um, make their own navigation controls and then they decide to insert um, event video. Now event video is one of the two choices available in Adobe Captivate to, uh, to show video to your, your users, to your learners. Um, the other being multi-slide synchronized video which is a, a terrible name for what it actually is. The idea with event video is that event video is asynchronous. Uh, in other words, that it, it does sit on your Adobe Captivate project stage. However, it has its own playback controls and you can start it over and uh, it runs uh, not in parallel with the rest of your project. It runs independent of how your project's playback and navigation works. Uh, obviously, if you go to a different slide, it's no longer visible, but that's about the only part of event video that's synchronized with the rest of your project. So if you're concerned at all about providing your users closed captioning, for example, 508 compliance, um, closed captioning is part of that compliance, and if you want to give users the ability to have their navigation controls, and I'm using one of the navigation controls that the eLearning Brothers make available to Adobe Captivate 9 users free of charge, and it has a play pause control, which would certainly affect any multi-slide synchronized video that I place on the stage, but it will not affect event video. So. Again, I encourage people that are developing courses that are uh, laden with videos that they should uh, choose multi-slide synchronized uh, videos. And don't get too hung up about the multi-slide thing. I think that's why people don't use it. Uh, but let me just show you a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about here. So like I said, I've, I've gone to the assets icon and I've downloaded one of the Adobe Captivate uh, templates that's available for navigation. And I'm using that to control this particular project. So now if I go into the media dropdown icon and choose video, you'll see I'm given a choice between event video uh, and multi-slide synchronized video. And in fact, if you hover over the names, you get, uh, you get a pretty good description of what these video types are. So event video will insert FLV object onto the slide. This object will be, will not be synchronized with the slide or project. So that's important to note. So closed captioning won't work. Navigation controls uh, other than what's built into event video uh, will not control the video. Multi-slide synchronized video on the other hand will be synchronized with the slide in the project. So you can add closed captioning, you can add the controls at the bottom like I've done here, and they will control the video as well. So let's select a video I have. It's just a dummy video. It's nothing special. It's just of an airplane taxiing by. Uh, I always go with just the default options here. Uh, this will embed the video and it will become part of your project library. You can show the video on the stage. Alternatively, you can show it on your table of contents, although I don't know why you would in this instance anyway. And of course, the, the default is to distribute the video across slides, and there's actually no need for that. You could. You could say that, well, I want the next five slides to show this video, and that would be a way to actually give you some additional navigation controls. But for today's purposes, we're just going to show this on one slide. And that's a reminder that synchronized video, not multi-slide synchronized video, can certainly just be on the one slide. So let's click OK. 
and that's putting this little airplane video here. You can play or adjust with the positions that you, you need it to be at, and then you're good to go. Now, I can actually click this video, and if I go to the Properties Inspector and go to Style, you'll see Edit Video Timing. If you click on this, I can now add closed captioning. So I'll just say, uh, this is a sample of multi-slide synchronized video. And we'll put something after about 10 seconds. You can add closed captioning to this video by clicking, clicking, <laughs> clicking on edit video timing from your properties. panel or inspector. So if I click on OK, that's going to add the closed captioning at the bottom there. And let's just do a preview and see how this works. We'll preview the whole project since it's just one slide. And we should get the results that we're expecting here. So here we are in HTML5. So if I turn on closed captioning, you can see it's not very clear, but you can see that there's closed captioning there that's going to be synchronized with the video. And of course, I can press the play pause button and pause the video at any time. Play, pause, play, pause. And of course, you could come up with additional controls, like you could add a skip ahead 30 seconds or skip back 30 seconds or 10 seconds or 5 seconds, whatever it is that you want. So multi-slide synchronized video is a great choice. If you want to be concerned about 508 compliance and closed captioning for the hearing impaired, and you also want to be able to control your video, don't worry, you can. The controls, as long as you create them and make them available to your users, they can control the video all they want. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.